Hi, I'm Anupam Roy from Kolkata. I play the violin and I'm currently a lecturer in music at A.R. Rahman's KM Music Conservatory in Chennai. Today I'm at the Indian Museum, one of the bastions of culture in the city of Kolkata and easily the oldest and the largest museum in the country. I'm standing amidst centuries, even millennia, of history in art, architecture and sculpture which I think feeds nicely into my topic for today, the history of Western music through the ages. Like most other art forms, Western music has a long and often complex history, and it's perhaps too long to be covered in one go. So I'm going to start at the beginning of documented history from around the 8th or the 9th century AD and come right down to the present day. The Indian Museum very kindly invited me for this talk on the occasion of Christmas and I'm very excited. So let's hit the ground. This is an example of what is commonly known as plain chant or more popularly Gregorian chant, the earliest form of documented music that we know about, dating from around the 8th century AD. It is an example of monophonic singing where everybody is singing a single melodic line in unison and there is no concept of harmony yet. This kind of music was composed, sung and propagated almost exclusively for religious purposes, that is sung in churches and monasteries by priests and monks. Gregorian chant started off as an entirely oral tradition with no written music. In course of time, however, a system of notating music called the pneumatic notation was developed. In this kind of notation, apart from the Latin texts, one can see some dots representing the notes vertical stems and horizontal lines, the notes going up or down, sometimes remaining at the same level, indicating the general directions in which the melodic lines should go. It looks very different from the modern staff notation that is widely used today, but it marked an important step in the development of music notation in Europe. The next few centuries are commonly referred to as the medieval age. One of the most important events of this time was the invention of the printing press in the 15th century. This had wide repercussions for music as printed works could now be circulated more widely and in much shorter time periods than the previous centuries when everything had to be written or copied by hand. This led to widespread propagation of the art around Europe and it was also one of the key factors that led to the rise of the Renaissance period, which followed soon after. The Renaissance period that extended until the end of the 16th century saw an outpouring of creativity, inventions and discoveries, not just in music, but in most artistic 
and scientific fields. This was the time when Galileo and Copernicus made their famous discoveries on the solar system, Columbus sailed to the Americas, and Vasco da Gama reached India. And Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo worked wonders in painting and sculpture. In music, the period saw the emergence of polyphony, where we have for the first time two or more distinct and independent melodic lines played or sung together. This in turn led to the birth of harmony, which is the combined sound of more than one different notes heard at the same time. The period that followed is commonly known as the Baroque era, covering roughly the 17th to the middle of the 18th centuries. Some of the developments of the Renaissance era continued into the Baroque period, while some others gave way to newer forms. A lot of the technological advancements that have come down to us in the present day were started in the Baroque period. For example, early versions of the string family instruments like violins and cellos, predecessors of the modern piano like the harpsichords. Some of the most important composers of the Baroque era were Johann Sebastian Bach from Germany, Antonio Vivaldi from Italy, and George Frederick Handel, again German but settled in England. These and other prominent names of the time composed in a lot of different genres including opera, oratorio, mass, concerto, sonata, and so on. Here's an excerpt from Winter, the fourth in a series of four violin concertos commonly known as the Four Seasons by Antonio Vivaldi. Towards the middle of the 18th century, some composers reacted against the lavish and often intricate style of writing of the Baroque period, and opted instead for clarity in their music, usually dominated by flowing melodic lines that could be sung easily. This gave birth to the classical period in music, covering the period roughly from 1750 to 1820. Some of the Baroque-era genres and styles continued into the classical period, such as the opera and the concerto. But some new forms emerged as well. Most significantly, the symphony, a large-scale orchestral piece, usually instrumental and performed in a concert hall, and the string quartet, played by four string instruments in a much cosier setting like a nobleman's house gathering. 
The two most famous composers from the classical era are Joseph Haydn and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Haydn is credited with the invention and the development of several of the classical period genres like the symphony and the string quartet, while Mozart, although he lived for only 35 years, took the classical style to unprecedented levels of beauty and richness. Here's an excerpt from Mozart's Symphony No. 25 that might be familiar from another context. The melody has been used extensively by the Titan Watches brand for its commercials. There was a gradual shift from the ideals of classicism to those of romanticism in most European art forms towards the second half of the 18th century. In music, the composer who was almost single-handedly responsible for this transition from the classical to the romantic period was Ludwig van Beethoven. In his early life, Beethoven was influenced by his immediate predecessors, Haydn and Mozart. But as he grew older, he developed a unique voice of his own and wrote some of the most iconic works in classical music. Some of Beethoven's most groundbreaking works are his Symphony No. 5 with its famous fate motif and his Symphony No. 9 where vocals were introduced in symphonic music for the first time ever. No other composer has had the legacy and the kind of influence on later generations of composers down to this day as Beethoven did, with his music played and adopted extensively throughout history. The fate motif from the Fifth Symphony was used as the victory code by the Allied powers in the Second World War, and the famous Ode to Joy theme from the Ninth Symphony which you will hear in a moment, celebrates universal brotherhood and was adopted as the official anthem of the European Union. The Ninth Symphony was also the work performed on the historic occasion of the fall of the Berlin Wall during the reunification of East and West Germany in 1989.
Influenced heavily by Beethoven's music, Romantic period composers began expanding upon the classical era styles and find new directions. For one, the size of the orchestra increased greatly to cater to the newfound intensity of the music. New instruments like the trombone were added to the orchestra, while the numbers of existing instruments like violins were increased. Composers also tended to write overwhelmingly for a select few genres. Unlike, say, Bach or Mozart, who wrote music for almost every genre during their days. Now, Schubert composed mainly for the solo voice accompanied by keyboard, Chopin almost exclusively for the piano, and Wagner produced monumental operas for the stage. Here's an excerpt from Schubert's well-known quintet for piano, violin, viola, cello, and double bass nicknamed the Trout. It beautifully captures the romantic imagery of nature, musically depicting a trout frolicking in the water. <laughs> The Romantic era covered practically the entirety of the 19th century. The period that followed saw composers branching out into very different directions and experimenting with vastly different musical types. This sheer diversity of musical styles makes it almost impossible to classify the music of the 20th century into one single category. Thus, instead of trying to fit everything in a single bag, Scholars classify 20th century music into a lot of different subcategories, each with its own set of unique features. Two of the better known subcategories are Impressionism, pioneered by French composers Claude Debussy and Maurice Ravel, and Atonality, with Arnold Schoenberg at its forefront, that challenged conventional notions of harmony. Global events such as the Two World Wars had an irrefutable impact on the arts of the day, music being no exception. Composers such as Dmitry Shostakovich of Russia saw the miseries of war firsthand. Much of his music tells of his experiences, and none better than his Seventh Symphony, nicknamed Leningrad, that musically portrays the march of Hitler's Nazi army into the city of Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. Listen to this excerpt where the snare drum plays a constant marching beat, which after a point of time almost becomes oppressive to the ear, precisely the intention behind this passage. This is music, not meant to be pleasant. We have indeed come a long way. We started around the 8th century AD and navigated myriad events, happenings and styles of over a millennium of complex music history and are now in the present day. Of course, this history is much more detailed than I was able to cover in a short space of time. 
but I do hope that our journey together will interest you in exploring some of this vast universe of Western classical music. Thanks once again to the Indian Museum authorities for this opportunity to share this music with you. But most of all, thank you for joining me today. I wish you a very happy new year.